IEM Cologne was the last big tournament in the history of Counter-Strike Global Offensive. This is it. This is the end. I mean, maybe we are dealing in Valve time. I'm gonna go over the interesting rounds on Mirage from the Grand Finals between Ents and G2. It was some solid Counter-Strike and a great send-off of the game. Here's what happened. Ents and G2 are both aggressive teams. Notice the G2 force buy after the pistol round loss, even without a plant. This was a theme this entire best of five series, the team that lost the pistol round force bought, which I think makes for some really fun, exciting counter-strike. Ents predicts some quick aggression here, and they use pretty much all of their util in the first few seconds of the round, meaning there's no Molotov for the B push that's about to happen. Now let's watch Baby Simple himself, Munacy. It cannot be overstated the raw talent that this kid has. When I watch him flick, he's one of the fastest players I've ever seen, and he's great at picking up 2Ks. Mirage is a great map for a player like Munacy. It's one where those clever and quick oppers can really shine. Against pistols, this is not a difficult hold, but what do you do against this? Munacy has not missed a single bullet yet. He's got a 5-1-deeg the entire team by himself to win this round, which in the grand final of a million dollar tournament, I shouldn't believe is possible. But hey, one miss is all you need. By the way, this is not a cast of the game. We're gonna jump around and show stuff that I found particularly interesting to showcase how great of a game Global Offensive was. So why are we watching this round? Lol, get naded. Thank you to Factor for sponsoring the video. Factor sends fresh, never frozen... Uh-oh. Oops. Never frozen meals in a box to your home. You just have to heat them up. Because I'm a psychopath, I'm on the one meal a day diet. It's exactly what it sounds like. So I'm gonna cook three of them. Factor has a great variety of food choices for whatever you're into. Vegan, veggie, keto, protein plus. All designed by chefs with the nutrients you need. This is my smoothie reload animation. There's a bunch of other add-ons, protein, sides, desserts. I'm gonna level with you. I don't like to leave my house or interact with other humans. Food in a box. They've been a longtime sponsor of this channel, and it certainly saves me time so I can prepare for Counter-Strike 2. Head to Factor75 or click the link below and use code WARAWL50 for 50% off your first box. It's a great way to try them out. I finally get to eat today. And starts the match 4-0 well ahead, so G2 calls a timeout before round 5. The gun rounds after a timeout are always gonna be good, because both teams get a chance to strategize. So much of competitive Global Offensive is playing around the bad smoke effects. I'm so glad they fixed this in Counter-Strike 2. Con smokes are notorious for being goofy one ways. To counter this, we have a boost to see over the top. This gives a weird off angle and prevents any sort of one way shenanigans. Flash me out, bro. I'm gonna run boost. On this round, G2 uses much of their utility to take mid control, which opens up their options. They have good map control, there's no gaps that Ents can sneak through or get some cheeky info, so G2 decides the mid game is over, it's time to execute into A site. Without a lot of utility left to work with, it does not go well. Ents get some good timings here, and we end up in a 2 versus 3. G2 has not managed to take control of the bomb site. This is a bad position for the T's. Not a lot of time left. Numbers disadvantage. Bomb is not planted. I'm gonna look at this from Hooksy's perspective. He's our main character right now. 25 seconds on the clock, what do we know? We know that a player went into Palace, he's either sitting in Palace or he's rotated to A main. We know that the B anchor is still alive, he could be anywhere. Now you could say, well he wants to stay near B in case the bomb carrier rotates. Nah, he could be anywhere. He could walk the jungle, he could have walked to CT spawn, he could be gone underpass, or he could be sitting short. What do my opponents know? Well they know that Nico is in A site, they know that Hooksy is in Con, and they know that Hooksy has the bomb. Enz has all of the intel right now, so what is Ents gonna do about it? They're gonna set up a line of sight to prevent the bomb carrier from getting into A sight. That's the right play. So what do we do? Well, the incorrect move is to run into A sight to try to plant. You're probably gonna run into one of those lines of sight. You can't have the mindset, I only have 25 seconds left in the round! Instead, you have to have the mindset, I have 25 seconds left in the round. 
how do I use it? Now the last guy is in one of two places. This is why I love this game. It's the perfect combination of mechanical skill, game sense, and teamwork. Because the rounds have been close, neither team has built up a bank, so we end up with this Mac 10. When you have one guy with a Mac 10, especially on an anti-eco round, congratulations, that's your entry fragger. It's accurate while running and jumping, so you guys gonna run in there like a madman. Of course, the Molotov kind of forces Nico to entry frag. If he dies and drops it, it's not a big deal. It's a Mac 10. If he does get the opening frag, hell yeah, that's an extra $600 kill reward in the bank. This is called Bogdan's Law, which is the lower health player gets the AWP. Now you may think, but the AWP is the bestest gun in the game. Why you get that to the guy who's gonna die? The AWP is a one hit kill. If you're low health, you're a one hit kill with pretty much every weapon on every hitbox. This way, you have a much higher chance of winning an engagement. Diha is hunting for weapons to save, sees the Mac 10, nah, takes that deagle though. I don't know what happened, but I broke the demo. Looks like spider webs all over the place. I'm so glad we're getting a new game. The game is tied up 4-4, we got a gun round. G2 puts pressure on mid, looks like they're setting up to do a B split. You have two players up short, three players running B main. Ah, these are the rounds that Mirage B anchors wait a long time for. Ah, no. Meanwhile, Khan and Mid are smoked off, and Nico has enough faith that nobody's pushing through that to keep his back turned to Khan. Ah, it just fills me with anxiety. I can't deal with that. Well, it's time to execute on the B site. We're all in position, but I just can't not check window room. Just, just one little peek. Oh, hello there. I picked this round to show because of the discipline of G2. It is insane. They do not execute on the B. They get ready to execute on the B, and they just don't. Nico continues to make space. The entire map is now open to them, and they're not panicking about how much time is left on the clock. This is what we like to see. Good, fun, thrilling Counter-Strike with the people use brain. Keep in mind, Entz just won the last IEM tournament. I was there. I'm here right by the stage. Entz is right behind me. Jumping forward to the second half, it's pretty much an even game at this point. Marvel at these pistol kills. This video is a little bit different than what I normally post, but I'm really enjoying making it so far. Let me know in the comments and by liking the video if you want more of these pro CS demo reviews. If this video does well, I kind of want to talk about Ancient from this series. Counter-Strike is a game where you're always going to be a student, more so now than ever. Things are about to get crazy. Round 19 is an important one. It's Ence's opportunity to stop G G2's economic momentum. Keep an eye on Hunter at Firebox. While Entz does this A take, Hunter doesn't trade his teammate. He doesn't try to stop the A take. He wisely waits, and Entz just never checks his position. You could say that Entz was sloppy with checking their angles. I think you'd be right. But part of this is the discipline to know when to engage and when to do absolutely nothing. All warfare is deception. But please, clear Firebox, or at least throw a Molotov there. And yeah, clearly they were having some trouble with clearing a site. Here's JKS with a great spray transfer. Round 24, once again we have the double A anchor play, and now it's obvious it's deliberate. We have the sacrificial lamb while Hunter hides, and they just never check this angle. This was kind of funny. Munasi is full blinded. He pushes through a smoke to triple, completely unaware that he's standing in a Molotov, still manages to survive survive and get the kill. I really like this strategy of sacrificing a player to get this stupid positional advantage. Counter-Strike players are devious, and for that reason, always check your angles, you never know. For the next couple of rounds, keep an eye on G2's positioning, how they're able to get map control through JKS's flanks, and then play so that the flanks pay off. The last four majors after the Astralis era, after the extended online only break that we're not allowed to talk about, have seen Simple get his Major, Zaiwu get his major, heck, even Jame got his major, but Nico never got his major. Winning the final great CS tournament, IEM Cologne, why is it not called ESL1 Cologne? I don't really know, but it's the next best thing, a bittersweet end to Nico's storyline but it's not a major. This may be the end of Global Offensive, but it is not the end of Counter-Strike. Counter-Strike is and always will be a dead game, and what is dead may never die. I'm confident that our grandchildren will be playing Counter-Strike in some form or another, unless we destroy ourselves with nuclear war or the aliens reveal themselves and they want Earth. The Global Offensive era is just one small slice in the middle of this game's history, and we were here to enjoy it. Thanks for watching, I'm the War Owl, and I still have no closer. Counter-Strike 2 could come out any day now, so every video is probably gonna end like this.